Okay, so this is my second test, this time from computer, straight from the inglorious headquarters in Turin. And I'm just testing right now when does the recording start, because last time the video was started, the recording started uh, a few minutes later than, uh, than when I pressed record. So I have no idea why it started later, probably because I didn't have any followers, any, anyone watching at that time. Um, I don't even know if the audio is recorded right now, since I didn't set anything else than this uh, screen called a few moments later. A few moments later. Okay, let's go to F2. You should see me now. And um, waiting for someone from the audience to, to join. I really have no idea if this is actually working. Um, probably I can check on the website, probably. If there's anyone out there. Okay, this is really bad because it's going to just doing some echo. So, okay, I'm going to close this thing. I don't want to exit. No, no, I just wanted to minimize it. Okay, this is minimized. I still have my chat here with me. And if someone wants to say hi, you're more than welcome. Okay, yeah, not in Rome anymore. Unfortunately not. But uh, at least the weather is nicer. So, hello world! Hi Crazy Sparks, I'm seeing you from my mobile phone, otherwise I don't have any other means. You should probably see the chat together with my... with my face. Hakwa Wo! Hi! Hi, welcome back. Well, welcome back Crazy Sparks and welcome for the first time Hakwa Wo, I didn't see you before, right? So, thanks for joining! It's beautiful to see you here, guys. Guys and girls, I, I don't even know uh, actually who you are. I probably also know you already in real life, but I really don't know who you are. And that's probably the cool thing about having these nicknames which hide your identity. As for me, as you can see, I'm completely open, maybe even too much. Even too much. Okay, I'm gonna close this one. Okay, so I'm trying to... Oh, Hakwawo is Hamza. Hi, Hamza! <laughs> nice to see you here too. Hamza is one of my former students, one of the best ones. Oh, Kaiser219, hello from Germany. Hi! You are Angelo. Nice to meet you, Angelo. Uh, I don't think I know you personally, so really thanks so much for sticking with us today. Uh, as uh, you probably know, guys, this is just a random session in which I'm testing the streaming platform, the recording platform. I did some customization on uh, the streaming OBS, so I'm able to show you my face, a little bit of uh, a screen here on, on top, and we also have a chat. So as soon as the streaming gets recorded, you will also see the chat ongoing. And I also have a couple of uh, other scenes, as they are called in OBS. So this will be our main scene, in which you can see probably the, 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 my screen uh, as, the main, as the main screen, and also some of the, uh, the chat and also my face. Zubair! Morning, boss! Morning to you, you guy! Um, really happy to see you here. Another one of my former students. I love you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. And um, so I've got some uh, settings done in OBS. This will probably be the thing that I will show when the lesson is not yet started. Uh, this is just me, so I can chat and look you straight into the, the eye. And uh, we've got this, which will probably be the main scene in which I will be coding and uh, you can follow along, you can code with me. Then we've got a couple of uh, Spongebob uh, related uh, screens like Coffee Break. Usually we'll do 15 minutes of Coffee Break. We don't want to go four hours straight, right? And if I need a short pause, I will uh, use this one. And if I need a long pause, I will do this one. One eternity later. 
I don't know if my voice is audible whenever you see these uh, short pause and long pause screens. Can you hear me every time, even if my face is not showing? This is turning out to be a Q&A from me to you guys. Yep, so, okay, you are able to hear everything. So, I'm here and you can hear me, right? You can hear me pretty well. Okay, cool. Yes, heard you the entire time. Nice, nice. Okay, so, this is already a good thing. Um, so, guys, would you like to, I don't know, ask me something, anything about the course, about... Or maybe even uh, tell me something about you. You like the scenes. <laughs> I'm really glad. Uh, I don't know if I am doing any copyright infringements. I'm a nine gagger mainly. So I love memes and I use lots of memes taken from nine gag or inspired by nine gag. Anyway, um, I have to find a way to look at the chat. Maybe if I put the, uh, the phone right on top of the laptop. As you can see, I'm using just one monitor right, uh, right now. It says, welcome to the Inglorious Ch Coders chat room. Thank you. I'm welcome back again. I also got to know about your channel through 9gag. That's awesome. Yeah, 9gag was actually one of the best marketing strategies that I found. And I didn't expect that, but I should probably buy the pro version of 9gag now, since uh, it, w it allowed me to collect something like 137 followers right now. And uh, I think it's amazing. I'm sorry to have promoted this course on 9gag, but as I already wrote on, uh, on the website, on the app, uh, I'm promoting something that is completely free. So I don't feel too guilty for that. I'm trying to reach as many people as possible, especially people that need a course like this and cannot afford it, or people that never had uh, a teacher that is willing to help them, to guide them. And well, as for me, uh, I never had a real mentor that encouraged me to do anything at all. So I think that my goal in life at a certain point started to be, I want to be the teacher and the mentor that I never had. So that's why I'm here. Okay, so um, thanks 9gag. <laughs> here is my post. I. Uh, I put this on 9gag, but also on uh, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Your format is exactly what I was looking for. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, man. Or no, yeah, you're a man because you're Angelo. Thank you, man. <laughs> I really appreciate this. Um, I know that there are so many other formats out there. I know that there are so many free resources out there. And in the course, we're going to mention them because I don't want you to be uh, forced to stick with me. This is just an extra thing. It's my thing and it's something that I hope it will help you, but you're not forced in any way to stick with me all the time. If you find that you're confident by yourself, you can just go on by yourself. I'm just want, I just want to help you. There's no, no money involved. So if, if this benefits you, then that's what I want and then that I reached my goal. And if it doesn't benefit you, then I will still give you some very, very good alternatives. So yeah, this is... <laughs> in, on 9gag, I tried way too many times to give the Twitch ID. So as you can see, I wrote multiple times the same thing because apparently it wasn't uh, perceived by the other by the other 9gaggers. So uh, one, uh, at a certain point I discovered, for example, that uh, if I write the URL, such as twitch.tv slash coders, then no, the URL doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to switch to the screen, okay. So the URL didn't, uh, didn't work. I was writing these uh, posts and these comments and they didn't show up, even if I put some, uh, some memes about uh, Game of Thrones. And then at a certain point, I really have to thank probably Pizza de Pasta, which was the person that allowed me to have a, a good conversation. And they also, uh, well, they helped me spread this Twitch ID that I wasn't able to, 
uh, to, to spread myself. So <laughs> I, will, I was saying thank you, thank you so much, because I was really in pain for that. I didn't know how to, how to deal with this. So, yeah, uh, I had a lot of uh, different reactions to this post and I think that they are all really, really interesting. For example, Michiel, or uh, how's it called, says, that guy is an idiot. He uses the wrong platform for that. Also, it's not something new or unique. And you can't become a true professional using only those free tutorials. There is a reason why proper lessons cost money. I really loved this post because, well, I think it's a little harsh, but in 9gag you have to expect uh, comments to be harsh, so uh, this didn't offend me at all. And uh, I, actually, I really enjoyed the fact that someone spent some time to give their opinion on this. So there is some guy that says, you definitely can, about half the programmers out there are self-taught. And I think he's right. Also, however, uh, some self-taught programmers are good programmers, some self-taught programmers are not really good and sometimes you can tell the difference as soon as they start working. But I also replied and I say, hey, idiot here, I, it could be wrong platform but I'll never know until I try. My tutorials, as you call them, will be actually proper lesson. Uh, I'm, experience, I'm an experienced teacher and also lecturer in universities. Only I want to give them for free. So this will not be the usual tutorials that you see on YouTube. We are we are interacting. I'm interacting with you guys. I would like to uh, really get to know you guys and try to help you uh, in the way that you need, uh, tailoring the experience for everyone. Well, if we, if we become thousands of people, it will probably be a little more difficult, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Crazy Spark says, didn't offend me at all, cries himself to sleep at night. No, no, please don't. <laughs> No, no. Uh, there are so many other comments which were really, really interesting. Um, for example, learning new skills does not equal getting a certificate honored by employers. But yeah, whatever. And he's right, he's right. Um, I said, it's a start. What can always get a certification or go to university later? And I think this was the same person as before, kind autistic, says, dude, it's programming, employees in this field don't care about certificates, you show them your skills and portfolio and get hired based on that. Well, I think that it's half true. Based on the, all the comments that I saw on 9gag, it, uh, it feels apparent that in some countries, the portfolio is enough. In some countries, you need some recommendations from other people and in some other countries you need certifications you need a piece of paper and they don't care about the portfolio so this is really really interesting feedback and i'm thinking about trying to provide everything you will build a portfolio with me along the way you will build a community called Inglorious Coders, which is my brand name. And in this community, we will help each other uh, technically or maybe even in a more, uh, uh, you know, pragmatic way. For example, if someone wants to follow the course but doesn't have a computer because they cannot afford it, maybe we can use a spare computer and send the computer to that person. Why not? Uh, or and or I can also issue some certificate, uh, some digitally signed certificate, maybe uh, a certificate of uh, survival to the Inglorious Coders Bootcamp or something like that. Uh, any certificate which is not issued by huge companies such as Oracle or Microsoft has no real value. But some companies really like shiny uh, PDF certificates that look promising. So I will try to provide that too. Why not? Um, so, Kaiser219 says, do we need to prepare something for the course, like a special PC program or so? That's a really good question, thanks. Um, no, actually, I think you just need a decent computer with at least 8 gigabytes of RAM, a decent processor. Um, we, are, we are going really slow, so I think that uh, an old computer is uh, still fine. Maybe the RAM will be an issue, but in my past experience with other former students, a computer with 8 gigabytes of RAM can be sufficient. It's not the best, but it's sufficient. And of course, you need a decent connection. 
so you can follow along and then we will start uh, installing the, so the right software together uh, we'll start doing everything from scratch together so yeah we will need some programs but we will install them together because I'm assuming that some of you guys will not even be able to install I don't know Node.js from um, from the internet so we will do this together we'll start really slow so everybody will have we'll start from a common ground and then we'll try to speed up trying to well not leave anyone behind but at first I have to go really slow in order to give everyone uh, an opportunity to, to to be able to follow so yeah don't worry yes we need special PC programs but we will install them um, we will install an editor which is called Visual Studio Code it's this editor here which I'm going to show you so this is some code and you can see the code appearing in the editor we will install the editor and you will code along with me on this editor sooner or later we will also use Google Chrome I actually have it installed already Ev any kind of browser is fine uh, Google Chrome uh, Safari Firefox Edge I would say please not Internet Explorer but yeah we can also do things in Internet Explorer it's just really really bad as a browser and uh, it's discontinued nowadays but yeah we will use also one browser any browser um, I'm using Linux but I expect you guys to have other operating systems such as Windows and Macs so in that case I will try to tell you at first the little differences the little nuances between the different operating systems and once we get them I will continue working on Linux well, you can, you will be able to work on Windows seamlessly without any uh, difference in um, in the experience, probably. Uh, Crazy Spark says, "I heard you say that your first lesson will be on the seventh teenth. Sadly, I have exams on that day and probably on the twenty fourth as well. How can I catch up on the lessons I'll miss out on?" This is a beautiful question, and I can tell you this. First of all, if everything goes well, this. Uh, stream will be recorded uploaded on Twitch and I will probably also export it on YouTube I'll see if I'm able to I was able to do this with the test that I performed on phone so if I go to wait a second because I can't see anything switch account Inglorious Coders yeah I created a channel called Inglorious Coders yeah I got it and in my videos you can find the first video which is the test that I performed from phone so from Twitch I can stream I can save the recording and I can even ex export on YouTube so you decide what you prefer if you want to um, if you want to look at the recordings uh, on YouTube or, um, or, on, or on Twitch another thing that I was planning to do if I have time I can do some uh, you know rehearsal sessions maybe the following Sunday or maybe on the in Wednesday on Wednesdays I don't know yet I really don't know and this is up to you guys to give me some feedback and give me some suggestions about this I'm open to any kind of feedback in fact another thing that I managed to do recently was to add couple of uh, cool features I really hate this echo effect okay I'm not gonna show you here um, I'm gonna show you maybe on the phone um, I know that in the chat app I don't know if I'm showing it properly so okay in the chat app uh, there are two buttons here which are two uh, plugins that I installed and one of them is just a stupid thing which is about sound alerts so you can send me sound alerts but if you abuse of these sound alerts I will start removing this feature altogether so something like that let me check if this works okay so this is yeah this is the sound alert that usually is probably issued whenever I, I do something really really sad or if my code broke, if my computer crashes something like that and we have many sound alerts like the applause yeah! 
Okay, so this is stupid and, uh, you know, entertaining matters. But in the chat, you also see another button and you can find it on the website too. <laughs> yeah, it worked. <laughs> okay, that's really, really cool. Okay, so another thing that you can do is actually uh, use another uh, feature, which is the suggestion box. So any one of you, if you want, you can try it with me. You can send a suggestion and I think that the other viewers can vote on that suggestion to, you know, to give me a feeling of what you would prefer. Uh, for example, you could say, hey, please, man, slow down because I cannot follow you. Or uh, your uh, English is not good enough. Or the, you're coding too fast. Or I would love to have this extra plugin that I know about and that I don't know about. So you can send me any suggestions you want. Uh, feel free to to experiment this platform with me because as I already mentioned I'm not a, a streamer I'm not a youtuber I am a software engineer I have 13 years of experience in software I have a few years of experience in the public speaking in general but it's public speaking in real life and recently due to the pandemic I started doing a lot more uh, public speaking conferences and lessons on the web. So I used tools like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, and I think that it kind of worked. Uh, former students of mine, if you want to confirm this or, uh, or not. Uh, so lessons in streaming, lessons uh, on in front of a computer are not exactly like doing this in real life, but at least this way I can reach people from all over the world, for example, from Germany. So I think this is uh, pretty, pretty nice. This is a pretty cool feature about streaming platforms. And yes, it's not exactly the same as being there with you and seeing your face, seeing your puzzled faces and uh, get the, feed the immediate feedback. But still, I think it could be uh, a good course if um, if you give me the proper feedback, if you try as much as you can to give me a feedback. So, Kaiser, can I say Kaiser? Is it Kaiser? Kaiser 219? Or shall I just call you Angelo? Angelo says to Crazy Sparks, did you get a notification on your phone that this streaming was about to start? Oh, this is another good question. Yes, please tell me this. Did you get a notification? Yes, correct, but please call me Angelo. Okay, I'll, I'll call you Angelo. Yes, I did. So, okay, you, you got a notification on your phone. And is there anybody here who doesn't have the Twitch app on their phones, so they didn't get any notification? Probably not. I see two or three or four people interacting today. So, oh, there's also Artax80. Sorry, I didn't see you. Just said yes. Thanks for the feedback. Okay, so... Uh, if you go to the, his channel, there's a bell icon you can click on and you'll receive notification when he goes live. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So if you go to the channel, you can probably subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is not my channel, this is the YouTube channel. Um, so if I go to Inglorious Coders, but it's going to have this... Uh, oh, okay, I can do this live. <laughs> I can... Uh, I can remove the, the, the audio. So in my channel, you can follow me and you can ask to be notified. I cannot follow myself, so I cannot show you how it works, but it should work in your case. Let me know if you have any problems with that, if you're struggling with it, and we'll try to fix this problem together. Another thing that I would really love to do, since you are already here, is to invite you to the Slack workspace. Another uh, important tool that I would like to involve, and I will repeat this uh, uh, during the, our first lesson, is this tool here, which is it's called Slack. It's a chat platform. Uh, I was uh, thinking about using Slack or Discord, and I tried both. But Discord is a chatting platform used mainly for video games. It's really, really similar to Slack. It has some features 
uh, more than Slack, but it also ha has some features less. For example, um, in Slack, you can write into threads, which means that I can uh, reply to a post, to a message, in a thread, like in uh, Facebook comments, like this. So as you can see, my reply is not showing at the bottom of this chat, but it's in a separate thread. I hope that this guy will not be bothered by my message. So one thing is threads. Uh, I know that we can do reactions on Slack. I don't remember if you can add reactions on uh, Discord. And another really cool thing that I love about Slack, I'm not sure Discord does exactly the same thing. In the same words place, we have uh, in the same workspace, sorry, we have multiple channels, so we can have different topics. And in Inglorious Coders, um, wait a second, can you make the browser screen a bit larger? Yes, sorry. This is the kind of feedback that I need. I'm really sorry. This is the, real, the kind of real-time feedback that I need, so thanks a lot. <laughs> Okay, so I was uh, talking about Slack. Slack. Slack is a website, if you want. So we can go to, you can go to ingloriouscoders.slack.com if you are invited. And as you can see, since I'm already invited and logged in, I can just immediately get inside this chat platform. Or you can install Slack for your computer. So I don't know, install Slack. And apparently there are downloads for Windows. I am on Linux, so this doesn't apply to me, but if you want, you can download the Slack application for Windows. Um, if you have a 64-bit computer, you can go with this one, otherwise go with this one, and you have this chat app available. Uh, as I was saying, I have this um, Slack workspace been going for uh, multiple years now, and it started in Italian, because I am Italian, and I started creating a community of uh, former colleagues and former students of mine, uh, people that I really uh, respect and uh, I have uh, admiration for them. So I wanted to create a communi um, community of really good people. And, uh, and recently I started integrating people that are uh, not Italian, that are English speakers. So right now we're going to speak English, but if you see some previous messages you will probably see some messages in Italian but anyway just ignore them and uh, I have different channels as you can see um, generals I love to put the Z at the end of every single word I don't know why so generals is where we just say hello we chat we uh, we I will probably send broadcast messages here then we also got uh, lulls, in which we can share memes and stupid stuff. Uh, we have docs, in which we share some cool documentation and some cool resources that are freely available online. There's helps, in which we will try to help each other, uh, technically or not. And this is where we were uh, a while ago. So there was this guy, Sohaib. He was saying, hey, I need to perform this task. Is there a way I can do it almost automatically because I'm a lazy person? And we said, yes, yes, there is a way. So I personally said, uh, maybe you can use the Google Translator API and traverse the JSON with the library for extra laziness. And so Hype says, yeah, hey, you now you got me. So that's exactly what he wanted. So as you can see, we can, we can help each other uh, by, you know, providing suggestions or providing material, providing anything. Uh, we've got a channel called Ideas. And ideas is when you can share some ideas for startups. For example, a while ago, on uh, February 25, this very good friend of mine, Josk, in Italian said, Hey, Ice on Fire, maybe you can start a streaming coding, live coding setup, just like this girl did. And I said, oh, okay, this looks really professional. I don't know if I can do better than that. And after one year and a half, I said, you know what? You convinced me. I'm going to start my own channel too. 
and it's a different channel from this other person because this person is just coding and you watch that this girl coding and probably she's also explaining her process but in my case I'm not just coding and you watch me we code together and we code together starting from the from well from the basics so it's a real course it's not just me coding and you watch passively uh, a person that's coding and uh, what else we've got jobs jobs is a place where we can share job postings so we can help each other find a job and finally I've got schools this is the latest channel that I created in which I will probably send information about this Academy about this this upcoming course so I'll probably send um, some uh, information some links some material here and we can discuss uh, about the Academy here so this is the only thing that's pertaining the, the course right now and if I want to invite you guys I think I have to do something like invite people to Inglorious Coders I can just copy this invite link which will expire in 16 days and I'm going to share this link on Twitch let's see what happens so I'm going back to the Twitch the okay the audio is already muted and I'm going to send it here and if you guys want to help me in this you can try to follow this link and tell me if you actually received an invitation you can uh, create your account you can log in and I will see you on slack and I will be able to say hello to you guys so I don't know if this is the right platform I'm using also the free plan but if the free plan doesn't suit me then I will probably start investing some money and uh, maybe go to a paid plan which will be paid only for me of course it will be completely free for you guys uh, in the paid plan of slack as far as I know you have uh, you pay for every user but you can uh, host guests so you will be my guests crazy spark says what's the difference between slack and discord that's a really good question and I try to wrap my head about this and one thing that I did is just Google it I googled slack versus discord and I found recently a very good article that tells you the difference but um, I don't see the thing that I have oh there's already one person hi Angelo I see you can I can I just welcome you welcome Angelo and I'm going to write an emoticon because we're not on slack uh, we're not on 9gag here so here emoticons I'm, so, I'm sorry they do not provide cancer and we can use them in fact they are they can also be used as reactions to some uh, uh, to some to some posts and comments <laughs> nice to be here okay so the invitation works and uh, when the link expires I will just issue uh, another link another invitation link um, so what are the differences between what is the difference between slack and discord um, I happen to read about it but we can start reading about it right now too Wait a second, however, there's PNTM2006 which says, what's your long-term goals for this channel? Oh, this is really a good question. Okay, I will keep it aside for a moment in the backlog. I will start, um, first of all, uh, answering to this Discord versus Slack. So apparently Slack is just for business. And in fact, one of the reasons why I prefer Slack is because if you don't know it, I will already um, train you to use uh, a tool that is used in some businesses some businesses use Microsoft Teams some businesses use I don't know Facebook for business and other things but they are pretty much the same they are very similar to Slack so Slack is one of the alternatives and if you know how to use Slack you will know how to use everything else Discord can be used for business but also for gamers and it's actually widely used by gamers so it's probably more tailored to gamers 
one thing that I really appreciate about business, for example, is that uh, for uh, about Slack, sorry, is that, for example, you can easily paste snippets of code and screenshots. And uh, it's really, really productive if you are working in a business environment, especially in a coding environment. While Discord, it probably is similar, but I don't know if it has, if it has all the feature that I, that I need. The primary feature of Slack is text communication, while the primary feature of Discord is voice communication. So yes, you have text channels, but you have mainly voice channels. And I would love to hear your voice, guys. But if the class becomes a thousand people, I cannot allow all of you guys to use your voice. That's why I put these sound alerts. But I'm probably not going to, uh, to let you speak because otherwise it will be really, really complicated. But we'll see, Let's, we'll see. Um, so one uh, short answer for my goals for this channel is, I don't know, I want to see how it evolves. And well, the tools that we are going to use are probably one thing that will keep or will change over time, depending on how this thing evolves. As for the pricing, uh, the free Discord is really, really free. Free. If you want to use this Nitro plan, it doesn't give you any more than that than what you already have. While Slack will let me pay a lot more for that, but um, I'm willing to pay if it's uh, if it's useful. Uh, we've got message history limits, blah blah blah. We've got integrations with the apps and bots. Um, you can use video conferencing. You can use screen sharing, but only in paid plans on Slack. Well, in Discord, it's free. Uh, okay, coloring, who cares about that? Uh, conversation threads. So Slack has threads, while Discord doesn't have. Voice-only channels. Discord has voice ch channels and Slack doesn't because it's not voice-oriented and it's fine. Push to talk, I don't know what this is, but I, I think it's mostly related to voice channels and I don't really care about this. So uh, one of the, this is just one of the many articles that we can find on the internet that tells you the differences between Slack and Discord. I think it, they are really the same, but I'm starting to tend a little more on Slack. Uh, also, well, for multiple reasons. For example, well, I already told you the first reason is that Slack is widely used in businesses. So you are going to train yourself on, in, in using something that businesses require. Another thing is that I already have a channel with people that are willing to help you because they are experienced software engineers and former students of mine. So it could be nice to, uh, you know, to take advantage of the fact that we already have a community of people and I'm not starting from scratch and uh, all the voice features I don't think they are really useful right now hey PNTM 2016 uh, 2006 sorry hi PNTM 2006 can you do, do you see how I I'm, I'm uh, quoting people right I use the at symbol to quote people, which I think you know already if you use other chatting tools and other platforms such as uh, uh, such as um, 9 gag. Uh, we can also use uh, the hashtag in order to reference a channel. And what, what we will learn all of this um, later on. So we can do lots of things. So long story short, I'm going to start with Slack and we'll see where this will lead us. Now, for the real important question, what's your long-term goals for this channel? So, as I was mentioning, I don't have real long-term goals right now. I always wanted to do this kind of thing. I had really positive feedback about this because in my during my conferences and my lessons, there were always people saying, hey, you should do this uh, on a global scale. You should do this on YouTube. You should do this on a, a streaming platform. And I was saying, yeah, probably, I don't know, I don't know if I can. Okay, I want to try. Uh, one long-term goal that I have is to have this course always free for everybody. I'm not going to say, hey, from now on, you're going to pay me. Um, there are some advanced concepts that I could 
start saying, okay, for those advanced concepts, if you really like them, we can start having something paid or maybe not. I don't care. I really, really don't care about this. Uh, you know, there are ways to monetize this free stuff. Twitch allows for some donations. Patreon allows for some donations. And I already have a Patreon account. And the Patreon account I have has a staggering amount of, of uh, patrons, which is zero. I have zero patrons and I'm earning zero euros per month. And my goal is not to raise this number. I don't care. I really, really don't care. I just want to teach coding and give an opportunity to people. So if anybody in the future will send me these donations, I will be really thankful. But it's not what it's not my goal. Uh, my goal for the next month is to do a course that will start really slow, will cover topics like the command line, uh, a very important uh, source control tool which is called Git, and then we'll start with these uh, three very important languages of the web which are called HTML, CSS and JavaScript. These are the three languages that I'm going to teach. After that, we can continue on and uh, give more information about more advanced concepts for free, paid, I don't care. But the most important thing is that I want to teach, teach these subjects here. And I already created some slides which are not really important. I will give them for free. They are already available if you've got the link and I will send you the link. So everything is completely open source and completely free for everybody. I really, really don't care about uh, keeping everything for me. And uh, according to the slides, but this is really, really uh, going to change over time. According to the slides, we will start on the 17th of October. We will go on every single Saturday, four hours, if that's okay with you, because if it's not okay, you can send a suggestion, you can uh, issue a poll, and we can uh, decide to do less, uh, less hours or more hours or more frequently or less frequently or in different time, in different times, because, uh, well, some of you are in different time zones and I want to, uh, you know, I want to, um, help you follow as much as, as possible. I have one guy that uh, sent me a message from Utah and he said, oh, okay, so what, what's the time? Oh, it will be 3 a.m. on Utah. I'm sorry for that. And he said, no, don't worry, I've got night shift. So that's fine for me. Okay, cool. Um, so according to the slides, if we do one batch of slides every single week, which will not, some slides will be will take longer some some slides will take less but if all the slides were a week long we should end the course on um on the end of march <laughs> so i think that this is the last set of slides and it says uh yeah 20th of march 2021 but i'm not sure i'm not sure so yeah, if we start in mid-October, we should end this thing on at the end of March. Of course, you can bail before, you can go later on, we can, you can stick with me later on, I don't know. Um, so we've got other questions. Um, I think, I, I hope that my long-term goals are, uh, are okay for you. I started asking for advice from other people and I heard suggestions that I welcomed, but I'm not really sure. For example, there are people that are saying, hey, that's a good idea, but you already have to think about scaling this idea. And when they say scaling the idea, it means that I have to probably recruit some other teachers that will do this job for me. <laughs> and I will pay these people and they will go around the world and teach the way I teach, etc., etc. And I don't really like this idea because this is my thing and I think that this course will succeed because I am doing it. I already did other courses that were scaling, so I was one of the teachers of a huge global program, but I think that my course will always be different from the courses that I always saw before. 
Thanks for the invite, says PNTM2006. Thank you for joining. Uh, really, thank you. Uh, this is getting quite long. I'm sorry if you're sticking too much with me, but uh, you're you're giving me really really good questions, so I'm really happy to to answer them. PNTM says, what coding language will be used, and also what is the schedule for the session? Afraid of the schedule might not be compatible with my time zone. Okay, though. So this is the important thing. Um, your answer is good for me. Thanks for the answer. Okay, as you can imagine. I'm saying that for now we have every Saturday 9 a.m. UTC, which means 11 a.m. in Italy, but it means lots of other times in different time zones. If this is not good for you, we can arrange something else. Just give some suggestions, just uh, tell me when would be uh, a good time for you or a good day for you and I will try to arrange uh, the, the course according to your needs. Uh, Jabata says, hey man, sorry, I just connected but forgot it's Saturday. How are you planning on checking everyone's tasks and are you planning on doing this for each student or would you focus on the general errors we make? Oh, that's a really good question. So I, I just created a slide yesterday about this and the slide is what could go wrong. One of the things that could go wrong is that the class is huge and I cannot follow everyone uh, at the same time. My biggest class was 20 people and I can assure you, yeah, I struggled a little bit. With 20 people already, it's quite difficult to follow every single person. Uh, luckily, uh, I could use some volunteers, some uh, IT trainers that helped me follow you guys, uh, follow the students and uh, check their work and uh, give me some feedback so I could collect some uh, really important uh, examples of uh, errors without giving names and I could so uh, take advantage of the errors of uh, some to explain those errors to everyone. And I think that this could also work in this streaming course too if there are some volunteers willing to help me. I know that some of you guys watching are already experienced developers or maybe you are former students of mine. So this is your chance to, well, give back. If you, you are already inside the Inglorious Coders Slack channel probably or maybe you can join right now. And if you want, you can just uh, help me help other people, other students, just like I and other IT trainers helped you um, last time. So, PNTM says, your answer is good for me, thanks for the answer. 9 UTC is perfectly fine for me, thanks, that's good to know. And also, apologies, but was the coding language question answered? Yes, I'm sorry, but I'm going to tell you again, that's fine. We are going to do the three main languages of the web. So, it's HTML, HTML. This is the logo of the language, HTML5 which is the latest version. Then we're going to do CSS, which is another really important language tightly coupled with HTML. And, and we're going to use JavaScript, which is the programming language, because the other two languages that I mentioned are not actually programming languages. They are called more like uh, markup languages, but they are really important. If you want to build anything at all, a good way to start is with these three languages. Once you understand these three languages, it will be really, really easy for you to learn any other language. And in the meantime, these three languages will help you build websites, mobile applications, desktop applications, server applications, VR applications, games, uh, artificial intelligence, whatever. JavaScript is now ubiquitous as a language, so you can do whatever you want with this three languages. And that's another reason why I, I chose these languages. We could start with other languages such as Python, but then you will have limited choices and the market is not really demanding too much of Python. While JavaScript is really, really famous right now. It's, it's really important nowadays. Okay, uh, I had a problem with my chat and I lost 
all the other messages. So I'm going to read them from the website. So this is one of the things that can happen and uh, I'm going to recover from these incidents. Jabata says, do you consider that by the end of March your students will be able to try their luck with an interview for junior devs? We will be, will we, sorry, will we be covering algorithms and other frequent interviewing questions? Um, yes and no. Uh, I think that, well, in my past experience, we will be covering some uh, easy search algorithms and uh, we're, we didn't cover sorting algorithms, but if this is one topic that uh, you care about, yes, we will also cover sorting algorithms. Um, just remember one thing, at least in my personal experience, when you apply for a position as a junior dev, usually the company knows that you have no experience whatsoever, you shouldn't even have a portfolio, you probably followed a course and you don't have any know-how at all. So one thing that is really, really positive uh, that I, I found out in my personal experience is that you will go to these interviews by saying, hey, yes, I am a junior, but I have a portfolio. I did this and I did that. And uh, I don't know if they will ask you for uh, coding algorithms right away if you're a junior. I think it's quite strange if they do, if they do. but still, we are going to cover that too if, uh, if you need. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that the interviewer, the, the HR, will be really astounded by the fact that you introduce yourself as a junior, but you already have experience, know-how and a portfolio on GitHub that you can show. So I think that this will probably already give you high chances of success in interviews. I really hope so. And if it doesn't work, then that's important feedback for me. So I will try to do my best and make your next interview better. Um, so Kaisa, which is Angelo, says, I don't know much about programming, so it might be a stupid question. No, there's never a stupid question. Just stupid answers by me. But what about the language C++? How does this fit within the programming languages? Ooh, okay. So C++ is one of the most ancient and important languages out there. C++, as you can imagine from the name, is uh, um, an enhancement of another language called C. And C is even more ancient and probably more important. Uh, in the early days of programming, we had circuits and we have and we had motherboards and we had processors and we programmed these things in uh, obscure languages such as assembly but then c was probably the first of the higher level languages that we could use although a little higher level it's really really low level and c is uh, nowadays used a lot extensively especially when you need high performance for example the core of a game engine is usually written in c because you want to keep those fps's high but c is so low level that sometimes you don't want to just waste too much time in dealing with those low-level problems when you're trying to deal with a high-level problem such as a business problem or even game problems, game-related problems. In fact, game engines are probably written in C and C++ but allow you to program in higher-level languages such as C Sharp or Lua or even JavaScript sometimes or Python, Python-ish uh, languages. So, C is really important for uh, high performances, which is games and also embedded devices. So if you are using some Arduino uh, microcontroller, you probably want to go with a low level language uh, because you have limited resources in such a microcontroller. But if you have enough resources and you usually have, so if you have a decent computer or a decent, a decent phone, you don't really care too much about that 
level of detail and uh, low level performance you uh, lots of things are already taken care of by other high level languages so javascript is one of those really high level languages i will probably tell you uh, some more details if you're interested in uh, but probably now it's not really the time if you don't know anything about programming so c++ is re still used but it's a uh, probably a niche programming language nowadays because it can be used in certain uh, environments while other languages such as JavaScript can be used in any environment at all so this should give you more chances of being employed okay so I don't know if the chat froze or uh, if you just don't have any more questions now Ooh, another one Okay, so with the slides, uh, I'm showing my desktop, right? Yeah, uh, I can go back to my face. Hello. Okay, uh, would the slides you showed be available for us to check so we can get to know what we'll be facing throughout the course? Is there a day week dedicated for code optimization so we do not make a one gigabyte hello world? If you're covering another language, does that mean that you are planning for us and the course to grow us into full stack? Ooh, a lots of really, really good questions. Thanks so much. So, for, first of all, would the slides you showed be available for us to check so we can get to know what we'll be facing throughout the course? Yes, if you want to, if you really want to, yes, I can give you the slides right away from today or from day one, day zero in programming. And you will see that these slides are pretty useless because they are just... Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, for example, this slide here you will see that this slide is a really cool way of showing you things but everything you see in these slides is just a copy paste of an online tutorial a free online tutorial that i found and i think that it's the best material that i found out there in order to teach these things so you don't need these slides these slides are just a copy paste and have a reference to that specific page of that tutorial so if you want to start coding right away without my help especially in javascript just go to the web this website javascript.info this guy i don't know who he is but he created this uh, tutorial which is articles that you can read with uh, exercises at the end of each article and I will follow a lot this tutorial and we will uh, uh, well I will give you my take on the articles I will not just read the articles along I will uh, try to you know elaborate a little more and give you my personal examples I will try to make it fun and engaging of course but if you want you can just go to this tutorials and you have already all the material uh, available uh, the slides are just references to this tutorial sometimes yes I put memes sometimes I give uh, some uh, extra exercises such as this one uh, there's another important website which is called free code camp I'm not going to follow free code camp but if you ran out of exercises I encourage you to go to free code camp and follow these exercises they are uh, um, interactive exercises so you will code and FreeCodeCamp will tell you if you did correctly. So there's so much online material that you can use. And uh, could you make the screen bigger? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, you know, you see, this is why I'm doing this kind of uh, <laughs> of a test. I don't want this to happen when we are doing the course. So sorry for this. I will be better. And uh, luckily, we are, we are doing this right now and not in two weeks. So, yeah, sorry for this. So, we've got javascript.info as a good, really, really good resource. We've got freecodecamp.org, I think. Yes, which gives you other really good online materials that you can use for free. And this will also give you some sort of certification if you complete the tutorials so why not why not having an extra certification 
Uh, as for me, I'm going to use this material and make it even more digestible to you. And I will provide some, uh, some of my own material maybe uh, from time to time. But mostly I will follow this kind of tutorials. Uh, as for HTML and CSS, I found uh, something else which was... Um, uh, I don't remember, but I linked it in, in, in the slides. So if I go to, I don't know, the CSS, CSS base. Oh yeah, now I remember, it's called Ryan's Tutorials, something like that. This guy, Ryan, created very good tutorials about the command line, HTML, CSS. They are not exhaustive, they are not complete. I think that from time to time he could have done better, but we are going to use some of these tutorials and some of uh, other tutorials that we we will collect this information together because the, re the most important thing, guys, is to learn to learn. I want to teach you how to find the information by yourselves uh, or with the help of other people, of course, and uh, but the material is all out there. You just need to find it and use it in the most fruitful way. Um, let me check again the let me check again the chat because I'm losing it a little bit. Uh, so the slides will be available. Yes, they will be available. I don't know how useful they will be, but they will be available. Is there a day week dedicated for code optimization so we do not make a one gigabyte hello world? Yes. In fact, I don't know if it shows up from the slides, but right after talking about uh, the basics of JavaScript, which was uh, slide number 10, the fundamentals of JavaScript. The second slide uh, in the JavaScript environment is code quality. So on day zero, you will start writing code. On day one, you will start writing good code. And this is something that I really, really care about. I don't want you guys to write any kind of code. We will optimize our code from the start. So you will not learn to code. You will learn to good, to write good code. Um, there are so many other questions from Jabata, so let's see. If you're covering another language, does that mean that you are planning for us and the course to grow us into full stack? I'm going to start with the three languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which will eventually allow you to become full stack. Yes, we'll start from the surface. We will start from uh, static web pages, we'll start animating them and then we'll go deeper and deeper until we can, uh, we are able to even, uh, yes, create a, a server application. Why not? Of course, this will take time. I cannot show you how to build a server application from day two or seven. It will be at the, well, mostly towards the end of the course, but stick with me and uh, it will be possible. Don't worry. Um, okay, could you make the screen bigger? I did it already. And uh, PNTM, could you share the reference links in the Slack channel? Yes, I will. I'm not sure I want to do it right now because the course hasn't officially started and I don't want the people that will join us in two weeks to miss those links. But I can and uh, yeah, I you know what, I can and I will. So I will also show you how to pin elements in the conversation, which is another feature that I really like about, um, about Slack, which I don't know if it's available on Discord. So, oh, Discord. So I can get this link. This is the link and anyone with this link could view this folder, which contains all the slides. So I'm going to Slack, I'm going to schools and I'm going to say, slides for the course. I'm gonna paste this here. Uh, I think that this is completely useless. Okay, I'm gonna post this here and I'm also going to pin. I can pin this uh, message to the channel. What does this mean? It just means that we have a list of pinned items that I can find really easily without scrolling all the chat. That's it. So now we have this information and this information will also be easily available for everyone in the present or in the past. 
in my personal experience i'm sorry but probably you will have problem ac problems accessing the slides because you will need some uh, authorization by me i don't know why this is uh, as you could see anyone with the link is a viewer so you should be able to see the slides right away but for some reasons sometimes google drive tells me hey this person asked me for access to the slides and i don't know why this is but anyway yes you will be able to to see all the slides from uh, from the start uh will we also use node.js yes we will so first of all we're going to use the chrome console so we'll start writing code here just to just to have everything working immediately out of the box but as soon as we can we will start writing code into files and we will execute those files on node.js and uh, at a certain point we will probably be able to use node.js as a web server one day but not immediately so yes we will use node.js and we'll start writing uh, console applications I would really love also to introduce some test-driven development right away with, uh, a pro, uh, with a tool like uh, Jest, for those who know it. So we can uh, start creating this mindset, which is all about a scientific and experimental approach, uh, which is something that most experienced developers even don't, uh, didn't uh, get, didn't uh, really uh, get into their mindset. So you will have a special power you have superpowers even uh, things that experienced developers do not have nowadays one of the questions that always bothered me is how heavily is coding linked with math because it isn't my strongest side for example how bad would it be exactly if i am not able to calculate let's say busier curves in order to implement them in a code would you upload this stream as well because i missed a large part so far don't worry yes i will try to upload this stream on twitch and also probably export it to youtube as i did with my previous stream which was on the phone I'm doing some tests, so I really hope everything will work fine. But yes, I will try also to, uh, to, 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 to record everything and to save everything so you will be able to, uh, to, to enjoy the stream uh, offline. Um, so, is math really involved in programming? I would say not, not really. Programming, I think, is more related to logic which is actually a, a branch of maths, but it's more related to logic than uh, numbers. So yes, Bezier curves are a, a very mathematical concept and we're not going to cover it, so don't worry. We're not go going to cover matrices of numbers, the determinant of a, or integrals or something like that. There is some programming that uses this maths because you want to automate some calculations but in our case we will start really softly and we will deal with business problems so websites web applications um, you know a, a, an application that allows you to for example um, create a grocery list and uh, change edit the grocery list and uh, remove an item from that grocery list that doesn't involve too much mathematics it's just uh, sums and subtractions mostly so there's m mostly logic involved then if you want to do gaming programming yeah you need Bayesian curves you need lots of uh, uh, of other mathematical concepts usually well, it depends. It depends on what the game engine is able to do. If the game engine is able to do all the calculations you need, then you don't need to learn too much mathematics. But the problem is, and I, I can assure you about that, I'm sorry, but uh, from the start, we will deal some with some mathematics because it's the way we learn things. But the mathematics I'm talking about will be really subtractions, additions, multiplications, divisions, not more than that. I'm not going too much on this. This is not a course about maths and we'll use as little as maths as needed for the course. Um, why did you share this info on 9gag? <laughs> I did because, well, apparently it worked. I tried to 
talk about this upcoming course on Facebook and I received something like three likes probably and people sharing my post but they the problem with Facebook is when you share a post with a link coming from a Facebook page what happens is that when you share it you just share the link without all the text so they were sharing just a link with no information that was not really fruitful some friends of mine copied and pasted all the text that I added but it was a mess promoting this thing on Facebook was real nuts I tried on Instagram and on Instagram only followers see your post and only a few of them decide to like the post and they cannot even share it so since I have been a nine gagger for uh, I don't know decades now and I really love the platform um, I see that there's potential to reach people from all over the world and I decided to yeah to, to promote this course on 9gag and see what happens uh, I tried using the, the well the you know the, the language that I'm used to, to to use every day which is memes and you will see memes in my slides you will see memes uh, all over the place when I'm when I'm doing the, the this this course and when I'm when I'm talking every time so I tried I said why not let's see what 9gag says and the cool thing is that on 9gag I received uh, an outstanding number of uh, of upvotes, which was almost to 2,200. I think that we're now at 20. Well, you see, 2,182. Am I showing the screen? Yeah. So lots of upvotes, lots of comments, and especially lots of uh, of feedback, even uh, harsh feedback. But that was a really, really important feedback for me. So I had multiple objections. Uh, most of them were, why do I need a live course when there's lots of YouTube videos out there? Or when uh, with 10 bucks you can buy a full Udemy course? And they are completely right. And this helped me understand better what is your uh, opinion, guys, about this course and try to, uh, you know, change uh, the course and adapt this course to your needs. For example, yes, this course will be free as any YouTube videos, but it's live. Well, YouTube videos are not live, so we are interacting. I am answering to your questions and I'm trying to adapt myself to your immediate feedback. And I'm also trying to, uh, you know, to speak to you, naming you guys, uh, which is something that uh, a video doesn't do. And this way, I'm trying to engage you more because the problem with self-teaching is that you watch YouTube videos but you don't want to code along you don't have time nobody's watching you so who cares but if we establish a relationship then it is most it, it we raise the probability that you will follow you continue following along you will have friends uh, to, to chat with and you will have me to interact with, to give me feedback. You can say, I'm frustrated, I, I'm not sure I want to continue. And we can talk about it, I can try to boost your motivation. This is something that a YouTube video and a Udemy course, I don't think they can do. So, the reason why I went to 9gag is, well, I tried. And I succeeded actually, because after I posted this stupid meme on 9gag, I reached something like 137 followers which is a number that i never imagined and i'm really glad to hear this uh, this kind of feedback i'm sorry this this was not probably the proper way to use 9gag 9gag is all about jokes and memes but recently it's all about politics so i just tried and uh this was the response uh, so, what the hell is a Bezier curve? <laughs> a Bezier curve is a really cool mathematical concept in which you want to draw a curve and in order to draw this curve, you select an, a start point and an end point and starting from those two points, you have two kind of uh, triggers that you can uh, change, you can rotate and you can uh, customize the curve. I think that we have even uh, 
uh, wait a second, online Bezier curve. We can, we even have uh, online material that allows you to uh, understand and even uh, use Bezier curves. So as you can see, we have two points, one here and one here. We've got a straight line in between, but we also have two, these two handles that spawn from the start and ending point. And you can move those handles together and as you can see, the curve changes accordingly. Well, this curve, this curve can be described by four numbers that you can see here on top. This dot 16, dot 81, dot 84 and dot 16. These are the points that describe the four numbers that allow you to describe a single curve. So you, you also have uh, different examples here and and that's it. This is a Bezier curve. It's usually used a lot for, uh, for example, animations, transitions. So if you want to move uh, a box from left to right, you can move it smoothly, um, constantly. And this is a linear Bezier curve. Or you can do something that uh, a box that starts slow, then accelerates and then stops slow. And this is usually uh, the result of applying a Bezier curve to the transition because the Bezier curve says start slowly we can I don't know change it like this okay it says start slowly then accelerate and then finish slowly this is the usual one of the usual um, yeah ap applications of a Bezier curve so as you can see yes Bezier curve are a mathematical concept they are important in some aspects but still you have lots of resources that help you even use those Bezier curves without knowing any maths behind it. Need those daily injection of memes, so no objection from me. Exactly. Uh, I also had another meme, but I didn't want to spam 9gag with ads, so I have a conscience too. Uh, so you will find that meme in the slides on the October 17th. Um, the only curves I like are those of curvy bays. You <laughs> hoo. I, I agree with that. Uh, you will need to control the chat somehow though, cause addressing a hundred people at a time would be a mess. How are you planning to keep up with the material and the deadline in March if we're all slow learners? And yes, you're completely right. And this is one of the things that could go wrong. If you are too many and you are very, very different, it will be quite difficult to follow you guys all at the same time. And make sure that the ones who are a little slower will be able to, uh, to, to, to catch up and the ones who are faster learners will be able to not get bored. This is a tough matter and I managed more so to address this matter by giving more uh, challenging exercises to the people that are a little faster or to give some more uh, detailed information for those who want to, you know, to explore a little more. And as for the slow learners, I, I will be available, of course, but I'm really asking for help to the people that are already in the Inglorious Coders uh, Slack workspace uh, to volunteer and help me uh, guide you and train you and uh, give you feedback on the material etc etc I would like to build a community because if the community is just me and you it doesn't work but if it's me and mentors and you and we help each other it could work a little more also right now we are not many people uh, so the chat is not really flooded with messages right now. It will probably be flooded with messages later on. And in that case, I have two hopes. The first hope is that most of you are shy. And even if you're following, you will not uh, chat too much. Especially when we are starting coding. Because either you're coding or you're chatting. And I expect you guys to code much more than you are chatting and the other thing is i will probably need some uh, moderators i will probably need to involve someone who will volunteer maybe one of the skilled ones maybe one of the ones of those who are not following the course as students 
uh, maybe they can read the read the messages and filter out the important messages and uh, you know do a selection and help me uh, reply to, uh, to to the most useful comments uh, this is my expectation but expectations can be uh, completely changed later on I have no idea how this will work I don't even have idea if this will work I will do my best to make it work and if you guys help me it will work definitely uh, it worked multiple times with smaller audiences and I will try to make it work for uh, larger audiences too um, but I don't have all the answers right now we will see how it evolves Okay, I think I replied to every question so far. Did I miss anything? Please help me. Uh, help me get this. Did I? No, I think I, I replied to everything. Maybe something on top? No? Okay, so I think that this could uh, already work as a test. Um, we spent an hour and 20 minutes together which is already a pretty huge amount of time I thought it it lasted 15 minutes or 30 minutes but I'm really really happy to uh, to see that so many people joined and started giving me this precious feedback and asking me these precious questions now the only hope that I have is as soon as I finish this stream it will be also uh, uploaded to Twitch and I will also be able to export it to YouTube I don't know if I will do also some uh, you know cutting and pasting uh, let's see, let's see. I'm just, uh, I'm just experimenting with you guys. Remember that you have this uh, suggestion box on, um, on Twitch. And uh, wow, you started using it already. Make sure to update your streaming category and tags so you'll draw in more people during your streams. You're right, you're completely right. Uh, I think that this will still be in the just chatting because it's not a real lesson. But starting from October 17th, I already set um, a category, which I don't remember which is, because I, don't, I didn't see any fitting category. And I don't know if I can create a new category. Uh, I'm asking for your help. If you guys know a little more about Twitch, uh, please help me define these things. And another suggestion from Crazy Sparks is please place a schedule on your channel for when you'll go live, days, time, etc. And you're right. I'm not sure I did it already, but probably I did. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see. Uh, if I go to my channel, which is not this, I probably have to go to Video Producer. And I'm going to... Okay, now remember. Um, if I go to... Where was my schedule? No, wait a second. It was in my channel. Let's go back to the channel. This is me streaming. Okay, we've got the chat. But okay, if I go okay, if I go down, there's the suggestion box. Ah, oh, where's the schedule? I know that there was a schedule here. Okay, I can't find it. So I'm going back to the video producer or the creator dashboard. So yes, I created a schedule which I will find. Oh. Okay, I cannot find it, but yes, I created a schedule. This schedule says that we will have the course every Saturday um, morning, well, at 9 a.m. UTC from now on. But I also had to set myself on vacation, otherwise you would be notified about the lesson starting every Saturday from, for example, today. So right now, if you find my schedule, uh, you should be able to see the schedule starting from the 6th, 17th of November. Maybe I can go to twitch.tv glorious coders from uh, incognito. Okay, maybe I can find it from here. No. Okay, so yeah, this is something that I have to probably to fix. Because I, I could see the schedule. Oh, you know what? I think that the schedule will be visible as soon as I finish the stream but uh, not really sure and we will uh, we will see as soon as i close the stream 
But uh, thanks a lot for these two very good suggestions. I'm going to upvote or thumbs up both of them because they are really useful. So really, really thanks a lot. I think that if this goes as it is going right now, I have a really, really good feeling about this. So really, really thanks. I'm um, going to go back to the chat in order to see if there's anything else. Yes, if these online courses will be a success and many people join the stream throughout the year, will you continue courses after the deadline? Okay, so I have one issue with that. The first issue is if people join uh, when the course has already started, it will be quite difficult for them to catch up. And this means that if they really want to continue uh, the course with me, I will probably need to do some extra uh, sessions for them to catch up. Always for free, of course. Uh, if they need it, I will probably do this. And uh, will I continue the courses after the deadline? Yes, why not? We can set a deadline in order to say, okay, for me, you are graduated. You are ready to uh, look for a job. And we can also continue after the deadline to explore some more uh, interesting topics. And then maybe the next October, we will start the course all over again. So it will be a real academy that starts in October and ends on, uh, well, at the end of March or at the end of June. Or uh, yes, I I'm really open to everything. Uh, you tell me how I can help you in the best way possible and I will do it. And this is a cool thing about live streams compared to prepared YouTube videos or uh, pre planned and uh, c completely, uh, yeah, pl planned upfront uh, courses that I found online um, so far. Okay, if there are no other questions, oh, there are some questions. I think for late entrance, they will have to refer to the recorded videos of previous lessons. Um, yes, yes, I think you're right. However, re recorded lessons could be discouraging, I think. Because one really bad thing of the recordings that we are doing right now compared to YouTube videos is that YouTube videos go straight to the point. You have a short video that tells you exactly what you need to know in the least amount of time possible. Well, it's inevitable that when I'm streaming, I'm also chatting, digressing, I'm replying to questions and we are also using sound alarms, sound alerts. So I think this will still work best when it's live, when it's uh, enjoyed live. But yes, maybe they can also watch those videos. Videos that will be probably four hours long. So it's not really easy to, to catch up and uh, keep the motivation high. But yeah, that's another possibility. And if it works, then good. If it doesn't work, I will try, uh, I will do, I don't know, I will try another another means uh, after the basics are covered would you proceed with an advanced course or would it be a recurring entry level or would it be this one time so you can see how it goes and decide later on uh, yes more probably I will decide later on um, what I would like to do is start doing something and then we'll see how it goes I think that from October to the end of March it could be a good time to go on with the basics. And then after March, if you're still with me, then we can go on to ad more advanced concepts. This is exactly what I did in, uh, in my last course. Um, I did a course which was a very intensive bootcamp that started on, I think, January. But we had this course four hours every morning from January to... I think the end of March or mid-March and it was really really a high-paced course because every morning there was some theory and in the afternoon we had to practice on some on that theory and then we went on and on and on and on like that and then we also had some uh, workshops made by other people about some more advanced topics and then as a bonus to my students especially to the students who uh, who, who were sticking with me for long and uh, were curious. We even went to other topics like uh, 
agile development, clean code, um, design patterns, which are courses that I usually give paid, highly paid, to businesses. So I gave these courses for free to my students because I wanted to, you know, reward their passion. So yeah, we can also have more advanced topics as soon as we covered all the basics. For example, uh, doing Node.js web servers is one of those advanced topics that I'm really keen to do. Uh, but I have to make sure that we first cover all the basics. And I give myself the deadline of the end of March. If we go too long, probably the fastest learners of you will get really, really bored. So I want to keep a high pace and make sure that the slow learners can keep the pace and will build the pace together with us. Okay, so an hour and a half. I think it's, uh, it's good to stop here. We can have one last session like this one next Saturday and then we'll start the course. So if you have other questions, uh, feel free to think about them and to maybe write them on Slack or write them in the suggestion box. Feel free to reach out to me and to the other um, attendants and we can collect all these feedbacks and we can talk about them next Saturday, uh, which will be the Saturday before the real course starts. But for now, I think well, I wasted already too much of your time. So thanks a lot for joining. Over and out. Bye.